we're back at it again with another Battlefront update. After some excitement earlier this week regarding a brand new patch coming to Battlefront 2 for this week, we've recently learned that unfortunately it has been delayed to next week instead. With that said, DICE did reveal to us on what this patch will contain, and it will not only have some buffs and nerfs to several heroes, but as will come with some much needed tweaks to instant action and co-op. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming patch changes, along with some other cool news including DICE's response on crossplay and the latest on Padme's future in the game. And before we get into any of that, but a quick reminder. As if you do like these type of videos, then do remember to give it a like to show your support for not only this update series, but also the content within it. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting out, we're going to be going over the patch notes for next week's patch first. Like I said before, the patch was expected to release on October 9th, but now has been delayed to next week. As for why the delay, then according to Ben Wok, during DICE's final testing on some of the patchwork, they found one of a critical issue and decided it'd be best to wait and fix things before shipping it off. Thankfully for compensation due to the delay, hero designer Guillaume Raz offered us another tease of what might come in the actual October update, which is the following. Abilities that currently stagger a blocking lightsaber hero will be fully blockable, as a lightsaber attack is from the front, but abilities coming from the behind will not be blockable and will affect a lightsaber hero. Added a lot of placement tactics in our playtests. So basically right now if a lightsaber hero holds block they can basically block every force power or ability that attacks them from the behind even though they aren't facing their block that way. This change should now mean you cannot block what's behind you. So let's just say you're Luke and you push Vader who's facing another direction. It should then send him flying even though he's holding a block. As for the stagger bit in Guillaume's tweet, then that means that abilities that currently stagger when blocked will not stagger when hitting a directly facing block. So yeah, this is interesting. I can see half of the community liking this while the other half completely despising it as this might either be a good addition to HVV or completely break it again. Hard to say, it sounds decent on paper, but difficult to say if it's gonna work in execution. We're just gonna have to wait and see how this plays out. As for the patch notes themselves, we've got a ton of tweaks and bug fixes coming for co-op. First, there are going to be new balancing changes implemented, such as tweaking AI and human player spawn points, adding props for coverage, among other things. The spawning rate of enemy hero AI has also been adjusted and several bugs were fixed like the timer getting removed when leaving the map out of play, fixing the intro camera on Naboo and Kamino, along with an announcer voiceover being corrected when playing as a Wookiee warrior. Then for AI, we've got quite a long list of fixes that are going to be going down, such as the issue where not all the hero AI would spawn on games of instant action, improving hero AI behavior with the lightsaber, such as to have them be more offensive with it, and then the rest is pretty much default appearance changes for the AI, which will see the appropriate legions for each map in instant action and co-op. Of course, as I mentioned in my last video, DICE after this will also be looking into getting players to customize these default appearances later down the road, or at least they're planning on doing something like that. Capital Supremacy will also be seeing a few changes as well, such as adding a panel as a destructive objective on the reactor cores on the Republic Attack Cruiser. This is mainly to direct where players can shoot at and where defenders have to keep their attention. Players will now be required to shoot at the panel on the reactor core to reduce its health. Along with that, there will be an icon and an announcer voiceover fix. Heroes and villains will also be seeing some improvements done as well such as dodging now will not be cancelling grenade throwing for Leia and Lando, also fix the running speed issue for blaster carrying heroes, and Chewbacca's furious bowcaster getting its animation changed. All of these are either quality of life improvements or bug fixes. But now as for buffs and nerfs, then we're gonna be getting those too, but for a select number of heroes. Kylo Ren will now see his damage caused by the Power of Darkness star card reduced to 14, 11, 8, and 5. Vader's damage reduction during Force Choke has also now been removed, which is surely a questionable decision by DICE there, as this will now practically ruin Vader in Galactic Assault. Especially not to mention that sometimes enemies aren't even picked up by the Force Choke to begin with, so this will surely lead to instant death for Vader quite a lot of times. 
But of course things don't stop there as Boba Fett is also going to be seeing some changes done as well. By this I mean he's getting a few star card changes. Such as the description for his intense barrage star card now changing to If Rocket Barrage deals more than 500 damage to enemies for one activation, its cooldown time is reduced for the next usage. So if he deals 500 plus damage with one barrage, the next cooldown is lower. This will require Boba to hit multiple targets to get that bonus. And this seems like a fair nerf as Barrage was always far too punishing. No extra rockets and Boba players will now need to be more accurate in their barrages to get the most out of it. In DICE's attempt to compensate for the nerf, they've now reduced the time of Boba's concussion rocket from 1 to 0, now allowing the player to act right after the grenade is fired. Can't say this is an equal buff to how he got nerfed, but at least Boba got way better off than Vader did. As for troopers and vehicles, the clone commando will be getting that damage reduction for his battle focus ability. We talked about this a while ago, but it's now confirmed and ready for the patch, where commandos will see 25% in damage reduction. In addition to that, speeders are getting their aiming improved after the last update made them a bit of a pain to maneuver in. No changes for the attack damage on the speeder though, but that might be getting looked into for the October game update. Lastly, DICE have fixed an issue that would cause various gameplay problems for players who were under the impact of the officer's flash grenade. These issues would include force abilities not working properly on affected players, as well lightsaber blocking and immunity while dodging not working correctly at all. So this upcoming patch will look to sorting that all out and not have the flash grenade act as an opportunity for more random in-game buggery. Next, the discussion came up regarding instant action and if an increase in bot numbers would ever come to the game. Currently, instant action sees games be 10v10, which is similar to the numbers that Battlefront 2015 Skirmish had. When asked if DICE would ever consider upping things to 32v32 for instant action, Ben responded by saying that performance would certainly become an issue and left it at that, giving players an idea that this would likely not be happening at all. And while I do think 32v32 would be amazing, I at first would rather want to see Instant Action handle 20v20 before going any further than that. However, based on Ben's statements, it looks like we're being held down to 10 on 10 due to the console versions. And this is because PCs would have no problem handling 32v32. Heck, there's even mods out there now that can let players do that. Instead, DICE is being held down due to the limitations of the Xbox One and the PS4, both of which came out in 2013 and even back then their internal hardware was considered outdated. And of course, before anyone gets any ideas, DICE can't just enable 20v20 or 32v32 for PC and not for consoles, as that would cause massive outrage in the community. So for now, things will continue to be limited until the day Battlefront 3 comes out on next-gen consoles, whenever that's gonna be. As for why we can't pause games in instant action, which if you ask me is super annoying, then Ben answered this as well by explaining why players can't use Nvidia's Anzol in instant action on PC, and uh, that's because of the AI. He said, we can turn this on whenever we want with a client update. Problem we have is that we can't pause the autoboys, so it might not be the best Anzal experience. We have discussed potentially doing it as an experimental thing. And yeah, the reason for the unstoppable AI is because unlike arcade mode, instant action plays like a local multiplayer mode despite it being offline. It's kind of like you couldn't pause a game of survival mode on Battlefront 2015 if you were playing couch co-op with a friend. So essentially the same story here, except the ability to add a second human player to a local multiplayer game is impossible. Moving on, but in case you haven't heard, Sony recently made the news by announcing that they're finally down to support crossplay titles with Xbox and PC. Previously, Sony have been very much against allowing crossplay, or at least allowing every single developer the ability to enable it in their games but have now fortunately changed their minds on it and are allowing developers to enable crossplay on current games. As a result, the Battlefront community have taken this news in hope of perhaps DICE flipping the switch and allowing Xbox and PS4 players to finally play against each other. With all the excitement surrounding it, it didn't take Ben Walk that long to chime in and give us DICE's official response regarding Battlefront 2 and crossplay, which unfortunately doesn't seem too likely in the near future. He had this to say, Thought about it? Yes. 
on our plans for the near future, afraid not. We are very much looking forward to the day this becomes a gaming standard. Now, this answer will without a doubt be a downer for many players, as I was seeing a ton of positivity regarding this topic, especially when the news first broke out that Sony is letting developers enable crossplay on current titles. I definitely would have loved the chance to play of friends and subscribers who have Battlefront 2 on Xbox, as I think, no, I know that would be beneficial for both parties involved. More players equals lower matchmaking times and other game modes being more livelier. Unfortunately, this isn't something that DICE are concerned about for now, but I'd be incredibly surprised for that not to be a thing on Battlefront 3 for whenever that releases. Finally, we've got some rather exciting news regarding Padme and her potential future in Battlefront 2. As most of you may recall, several voice lines were previously datamined that featured heroes speaking to or referencing a Padme hero in the game. Which all that really told us is that either DICE were working on her, or at the very least had Padme in mind to incorporate her into the game later on. And well, for the longest time we haven't had any update on this until now. Catherine Tabor, the voice of Padme on The Clone Wars, was asked by a fan on what she thought about the potential of Padme being in Battlefront 2. Catherine responded by saying, I am so there, just waiting for the holocall from EA Star Wars. Think about the weapons, think about the vehicles, and yes, think about the wardrobe. And normally this wouldn't really be big news, as of course who would say they wouldn't want to voice an iconic character in a Star Wars game. However, things really took a turn when Dennis Branville, the design director of Battlefront 2, retweeted the tweet and replied with the you call this a diplomatic solution meme, which just really was out of the blue but also incredibly interesting. Dennis first of all rarely tweets, or at least he didn't until this retweet. And when he did, it was either to say something important or to make a tease. And as we see here, he's not only acknowledging Catherine's desire to voice Padme in Battlefront 2, but retweets it to show everyone and seems rather giddy about the whole thing too. And come on, can we blame him? Now if Padme was indeed being worked on by DICE, then Catherine naturally wouldn't have done any voice lines yet, as voice acting is always done last. It was also the same case of Obi-Wan Kenobi, where DICE were working on Kenobi last year, but James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Kenobi, knew nothing about it. When he was asked if he had done any voice work for DICE, he said he hadn't and knew nothing about Kenobi being even in the game, but said he'd love to do it if DICE were to ask him. And then, of course, as we all know, DICE finished working on Kenobi, called James up, he did the voice work, and Kenobi was in the game for the 2018 November update. And who knows, it might just be the same story of Catherine here. Just like of James, she doesn't have any clue about Padme being in the game. But Dennis, well, he obviously knows more than her and the rest of us outside the hypothetical curtain. Of course, none of this is confirmation that a Padme hero is coming, but it's certainly a start in the right direction if you ask me. Granted, I still see Ahsoka and Ventress coming out before we get Padme. And that's mainly as we've seen and heard so much more about their development than Padme's. But hey, anything is possible. Especially if Clone Wars Season 7 coming out early next year, then you can be sure the focus on prequel content will once again be at an all-time high. Oh, and also a quick FYI, but as of the recording of this video, the current community quests for Farm Boy Luke and the Maul Kenobi emote are bugged, so players right now aren't seeing their progress for the quests being recorded. With that said, keep in mind that DICE do know about the issue and are investigating for a fix. This fix should be made server-side and might be done midday Friday from what I've heard, so yeah, no need to panic. If anything, I'd wait until tomorrow or the weekend just to be safe before doing the quests. But that'll do it for this Battlefront update. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to not only support it, but keep up with Star Wars news, gaming, and canon lore released every week. And consider following me on Twitter and Facebook to never miss out on the latest Star Wars content. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.